Hi everyone, I'm Stephen Berlin and this is my last of four talks on Transcendence and Dreams. And my previous one was kind of heavy, you know, the epic of man and even Hitler thrown in there. Uh, this one is much lighter fare. And uh, you could even call this a transcendent chick flick. So uh, you guys might want to change the channel. Uh, uh, ladies don't get upset by my use of those words. Uh, I mean it affectionately and uh, uh, tongue in cheek. I mean, I've never been known for being Mr. Romance. I mean, I'm a gentleman. I open doors and I act like a gentleman when in public. It's just that I don't like to hold hands in public. I don't like to uh, kiss in public. And I don't, you know, feel it necessary to say I love you 50 times a day, you know, to prove it. And, and Valentine's Day is not my favorite holiday. So, which makes it all the more startling that this transcendent dream came to me, of all people. But uh, anyway, before I get into the dream, I want to say that I had a plan that in my next lucid dream that I was going to uh, not treat my dream characters as dream characters, but I was going to pretend that the characters that appeared in my dreams were living, real, uh, independent, sentient beings. And uh, in other words, that they were really real and had their own existence. So anyway, I have this dream and I become lucid in it and I decide to put that plan into action. And I look and I'm apparently uh, present at the production of what appears to be like a, a music video. And there's cameras and there's a, you know, a performing area. And there was a girl standing in the performing area that I was really attracted to. So uh, I walked up to her, I just walked up to her and we, she glanced at me and we just, um, I just embraced her. Now, I would never walk up to a stranger and embrace them in public, believe me. But, but I, I did hear in the dream, being lucid, I embraced her. And then to see, to make sure she was really real, as my plan was, I looked deep into her eyes. And as our gaze became interlocked, it was like I was looking into infinity. And and I felt this love. Now when I say love, it had that pure sense of like your first young childhood infatuation, you know, where you're just like lovesick over, you know, somebody, or it's, they're all you can think about, that, that excitement. Well, that's what I felt looking into, into her eyes. And then after, after our, we were able to pull our gaze away, or still gazing anyway, we we passionately kissed, and uh, now when I say passionately kissed, I mean I didn't, uh, you know, I, uh, you know, shove my tongue down her throat and obstruct her airway or anything. It was just a passionate kiss. Anyway, we began dancing, and uh, the, I don't remember what the music was, but it was a slow dance, sort of like a waltz. You know, we were sl slow dancing around, and in, in in this swoon we were feeling. And as is common in my dreams, for those of you that have listened to the other dreams, I tend to float up off the floor and, and raise up unexpectedly. And that's what happened here. So we're now dancing off the floor. So we're kind of like dancing in like circles. And then we begin to spiral up as we dance. So now we're going up and up and up and up, higher and higher and faster and faster. And the emotions keep getting more and more and more intense and the love greater and greater and greater. And, and then when we got to what you would call the stratosphere of the dream, the whole universe just blew out from us as though we were the center, like, like the Big Bang, the, uh, uh, like an exploding firework, but more like the Big Bang because it was in all directions. And then just like you know, those pictures you see from the Hubble telescope of the beautiful you know, nebula and the, all of this, we had the, you looked around in the darkness of space and we had the stars and the galaxies and the nebula and, and it was just stunning three-dimensional astronomical beauty. And now we're dancing in outer space with no ceiling above, no floor below, and we're in like a, a love rapture. And then echoing throughout the universe, now I can know what the music is that I'm hearing, and it's echoing through the universe in this big, bare, beautiful baritone voice. Now I'm kind of embarrassed to say this because this isn't, you know, my choice of music as a rule, to say the least. But anyway, it was Engelbert Humperdinck singing, I danced the last waltz with you, 
two lonely people together. I fell in love with you. The last waltz will last forever. <laughs> I could see me wanting to delete this in about a week, but you know, well, what the hell. Anyway, so Engelbert Humperdinck is singing. And anyway, and so then as we're dancing in this exquisite immensity of the cosmos and listening to this music, she taps me and like looks up and I look up to where she's looking and around us is this like Greek or Roman statue of a goddess, like concrete type statue, but it's animated and the statue is holding this like baton or stick and it's conducting the dance. So as we're dancing through space, this Greek statue is conducting our dance orbiting around us as we dance through space. So, and it was just as though the entire cosmos, the music, the conductress, everything was created just for us. And then everything in the dream uh, turned into what I wrote in my dream journal, autumn leaves is what it seemed like. And we kind of like blended into the leaves and I woke up in love. Now, where she is, who she is, out there, in here. The eternal love. I felt it. The love of the ages. It was there and it was individual. So, now, this is a great dream for those of you that believe in soulmates and twin flames and twin rays and all those things. This is the perfect dream for that. Now, being my age <laughs> and having some experience with my experiences with women, I'm a little bit, pardon me if I'm a little cynical on that, uh, on that belief, but, uh, but anyway, it was a great dream and that's, and so we're done with this subject and I'll move on to some other things that will probably be more interesting to a larger cross section of people. So anyway, since I was waltzing in the dream, and since this is the last of these that you have to endure listening to, uh, you can all now just start doing the polka. <laughs>